Hi, it's Simon, and this week I took a trip to Apple HQ in London to get the inside track on the new M3 MacBook Air and take a look at its features, the use cases you might want to use this super light and portable laptop for with some creators who've been putting it through its paces. So is it for you? Should you upgrade? What does this actually offer us over the previous models? These are my first impressions on what must have been Apple's most popular laptop in recent years, Apple's future in AI integrated tech, and I even grab an impromptu chat with Tom from the excellent channel Bike Review for his perspective on using the MacBook Air M3 over the last month. We better get creating. So first, the headlines. The M3 MacBook Air was released last week and follows the footsteps of the M2 MacBook Air that was released in June 2022. That was an upgrade to the super popular and amazingly good value M1 MacBook that preceded it, this time in a 15 inch and 13 inch form factor, along with a design refresh, thinner bezels, better performance, better in most ways essentially. Well, the main negative is that it was more expensive. Well, Apple invited me down to their amazing offices in Battersea to see how people are using these new M3s and whilst I was there I saw some exciting new potential with these super light fanless machines that offers serious battery life claimed up to 18 hours of local video playback on this new model and that seems to set us up for the future using this super powerful chip. Compared to the M1 these new M3 MacBooks are more powerful with better connectivity due to the MagSafe upgrade from M1 along with 20% brighter screens, noise cancelling and 1080p webcam upgrades when you're on those Zoom calls, and all in all, it's a big spec bump from the M1. This means the M1 is discontinued, other than as a refurbished version on Apple's website now, and the M2 model has become their entry-level spec. So, is it worth paying the extra 100 to go for these over the M2 models, and which spec should you go for? Well, if you don't own an M2 already, this is probably a great time to consider the upgrade option. But I have to say, the base model at only eight gigabytes of RAM might be one to miss, and with the potential of the new developments in AI and gaming coming through the App Store these days, that just doesn't seem enough power to me to justify the spend. I would plump for the upgrade to 16 gigabytes of RAM to really make this a longer term investment. And I would also consider opting to bump the SSD up from 256 gigabytes to the faster and larger 512 gigabyte options to really support larger workflows. This spec would take the base from 1099 up to 1500, so perhaps the best option could be to just upgrade the RAM. But it's the M3 processor here that's the big headline. The GPU is claimed as 60% faster from the M1, and this translates to gaming too. Without going into details, I saw someone play a really high performance game on a fanless laptop top at 60 hertz and it looked really fantastic. Now some tech reviewers have even questioned if, due to the power increase, a MacBook Pro is even worth buying for most people now. Now, Apple also seems interested in pushing the AI capabilities of the M3, which has a 16 core neural engine built in with the potential to offer some exciting new levels of on-device AI apps, and even using larger language models directly on your laptop. I saw someone using FreeChat and Lumina Neo as apps that support this, and a demo of the 365 suite using its co-pilot on-device with the OS desktop app, all very promising. Now I think the M3 chip will also allow users to run AI supported image editing and full large language module functionality akin to ChatGPT far more easily and directly on device. Now this could be the future, my friends. I think we're all anticipating that Apple might be about to announce new AI functionality with Gen AI and Siri, likely in June at WWDC. But let's see, it's another argument for getting future-proofed for what's coming. And watch this space on that one. Make sure to get subscribed for more great ideas, tools and tech to make your life a bit easier including all this Apple stuff. So who's this for and should you upgrade? Well, as I saw demonstrated in Battersea, the MacBook Air is a great portable choice for a lot of people from freelance creators to students and even creative businesses like this very cool bike company that we met. But on the question of who the computer is for, this actually feels like the perfect moment to jump across to my impromptu chat with the wonderful Tom from Bike Review, where we discussed how this new MacBook Air compares to the MacBook Pros and Apple Studio systems he's used, and how he's feeling about the power of AI in our workflows in the future. 
Hello everyone, I've rocked up to an Apple briefing today and I've bumped into Tom from Bike Review. Hello. You've brought your entire set. Apple invited me up and they also built my entire kind of studio set here, which is awesome. I think the first thing is just to say, like, I'm a really big fan of your channel. It's been That's very kind. I've been following you for a little while. <laughs> Are you running everything off this? It's a funny one because I, I use a MacBook Pro and a Mac Studio. Generally speaking, those are my like, you know, tools of the trade. But this has been able to keep up. In fairness, I've been using, I used the M2 MacBook Air, like eight gigabytes of RAM. I was like, this ain't gonna cut it. And it like, it did. The only times where you can tell it's slower is when you export like a video. Otherwise, day-to-day -day performance and even editing video is unbelievably good. It, it matches my MacBook Pro, Mac Studio, no problem. Will you stick to it? Yeah, a Mac Studio is my like bread and butter. So that's not going anywhere at all. I almost hate to say this, but they made it so good. I almost, there's no need for me to upgrade, right? Because yeah. it's handling my video editing workflow so well. The idea of jumping up to a newer Mac doesn't make a huge amount of sense at all. I mean, if this can replace my MacBook Pro and be slimmer and smaller, then cool. It does nearly everything so well. But for me, for someone who's doing content full time, the pros are a bit more suited to it. You get the SD card slot. Yeah. There's things like that, which should just make it easier. But for anyone that does content like occasionally, like if you're a social media manager, something like that is perfect and it, it will be for anyone who dabbles or who does do a lot, but not all the time. Everyone's talking about the AI inbuilt yeah. onboard AI stuff. Are you using any of that AI stuff? I haven't really explored it enough to need it at the moment, but I'm sure it will just become more and more common. Like on Photoshop at the moment, you can highlight something and just press remove on generative. And it's incredible, it does such a good job. We actually used a, a little bit of AI to help us make um, wallpapers, like these sorts of ones you're seeing. We used a little bit of mid journey to kind of give us the, the vibe yeah. of what we're looking for. And then I think we did like 340 generations to get what we wanted. And then we brought it into Photoshop and then highlighted certain parts we liked and moved those around. Of course. I so think it's, it's important to say that, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. It's a great assistant. It should never replace the overall thing. And we, we're open about it. We say on the website, yeah. we had AI help out with this one. Thanks, man. That's all right. I hope you enjoyed it. It's been great. <laughs> thanks to Tom from Bike Review. Make sure you check out his channel if you haven't. And uh, yeah, thanks for bringing us into your Apple, Apple home. Yeah, you're more than welcome. Now, overall, it is very impressive what this M3 chip can do. Seeing Tom process and render multiple layers of 4K footage at the same time as working in Photoshop with no issues and without a fan on the laptop, that is an incredible leap from where we were just a few years ago. And for 90% of the general user out there, this is more power than you'll ever need. Now, if you work with video or big digital renders, long projects that you might wanna have a bit more support for, maybe you'll prefer the uh, ports and brighter screen and cooling offered from the MacBook Pro laptops like I do. But if you own an M2 Air already, it's likely not worth the upgrade. And I don't think Apple are even suggesting that people should. The main difference I'm drawing from the M2 to the M3 is the increased processing power, the neural engine capabilities for AI, and the ability to support two 5K external displays in clamshell. And well, apparently they reduce the possibility of fingerprints on the body. Nice to have, I guess. Well, let me know what you make of the M3 Airs below. And if you're still here, definitely get subscribed. And I recommend checking out one of these videos next for my favorite Mac accessories and use cases to make the most of your shiny Apple tech. And with that, well, I'd better get back to creating.